Hi, this is Matt. Uh, so I don't know if this camera is going to work too well. Uh, it's a different camera than I usually use. Uh, but anyways, I mentioned in the first video about the uh, the draw bar for the uh, pulling up your MT2 or MT3 uh, taper, your Milton taper. Uh, so I want to go into a little detail on that. I need to change this out because I'm going to put another tool in. So I figured I'd show how this is done uh, on at least my rig here. Uh, so first I'm going to take out my ER32 call. Uh, just going to take that out. Leave the cap down. And I'll just set that aside for now. So what eventually what I do is put a hex screw up there with a hardened screw uh, but for now I just I used what I had had on hand uh, and it's just a regular Phillips screw that goes up in here so it goes straight up through the inside here if you can see what I'm doing uh, and I'm just going to back this screw out It really doesn't take much to hold this in here. You just need to make sure that it's not going to come loose. Okay, so get it out of here. So this is all I have up in there. Uh, you can see that. Yep, there we go. So now I need to get my knockout tool and see if we can drop this out. Okay, so I guess there's a reason I wasn't using that camera for quite a few years. Uh, then quit on me right in the middle of recording. So anyways, uh, I've got it knocked out now. And uh, this is the screw that I was mentioning that pulls it up in. Uh, let's get that backed out. And uh, that goes, if we look inside here, uh, that bore is big enough to uh, accommodate the head and let it go all the way up through to the very top where uh, we have the N10 uh, nut. Now what I've done here is there was a head originally on here. I've taken it in the lathe, uh, cut the head off and turned it down. Uh, I've bored a hole right in the center of that uh, and then I cut a slot. And this basically what it does is you have the bore, it's big enough to let the head through, but you need to stop it at the top. So this is upside down, uh, but that's big enough to stop the head from going through. Uh, so when we come up from the bottom, what it will do is pull it up into the taper. So the, the rest of this, uh, this is the little cross piece that I made. And you got a hole drilled in the top that is threaded. Uh, I don't know if we can get the focus good enough to show the threads, but they're in there. Uh, so the layup of this, you know, just do a little mock. It goes like that, and that crossbar, and then the screw will go up in through and pull those tight. So that ends up in here. And we'll take my knockout out. And this little piece sits right inside that space where the knockout goes. And it bridges the inner shaft. So you've got your spindle housing on the outside here. And see if I can get a screwdriver to point. That part there would be the inner shaft. Uh, in fact, I can rotate it so you can kind of see there so that's the inner shaft and then we we'll just take this run it across so it kind of sets in there like that now if you notice this kind of a U shape the uh, the U what it does is it fits around the top of the M10 nut here and then the legs touch down on the top of the inner shaft so it, it 
that pushes down as the uh, Milton taper gets pulled up in. And then it holds everything nice and tight. I haven't had any problems with it coming loose. If you do one of these, you definitely need to do something to hold it up in there. Your layout may be different, but this is one idea. Uh, but it positively needs to be held with something that will not let it slip out. Because having this run out when you've got tools spitting in there at high RPM is extremely dangerous. Uh, and they will come loose if you don't have something to retain it. Uh, it's not like running a drill because the drill presses the taper up in every time you use it. Milling is just the opposite. You're putting a lateral force on it and that loosens it up. Okay, so that covers this episode.